I'm going to tell you about two new technologies, both separately and very recently used in concert, that are moving us toward a yes to that question. Okay. There we go. Got it. So we know what today's post-PRK visual challenge is. Post-surface ablation vision takes at least four days to reach a functional level because of blurry vision, hazy vision. The refraction during days one to four swings all over the place. The bandage contact lens curvature changes as it conforms to the migrating epithelium. So here you see at the very beginning when the epithelium is just starting to migrate, there's actually a hyperopic curvature that requires plus power. There's actually a 44 micron step off between the epithelial edge and bare Bowman's layer. So a day or two later, we now have a myopic shift because as the uh, epithelium meets at the center, there's a big mound of epithelium. It's 30% thicker, so this requires minus power. <laughs> that music, I feel so flattered, it's for me. The, um, so here you see a plot of the average epithelial defect size in millimeters as it closes over the first few days in this wild swing in refraction. This is data from Enrique Barragan on 112 patients. So the optical clarity, days one to four, hazy vision, very poor optical clarity because of corneal edema and epithelial clusters. Here you see stromal edema post-PRK is extreme. It, in this data here, you see that immediately after the PRK, taking into account the amount of tissue that's just been shot off by the eczema, there's 80 microns of stromal edema that takes 72 hours to resolve. All of that is scattering light and causing hazy vision. So a unique solution for PRK is this new shield from Nexus Vision. It has a rigid optic, whereas a bandage lens has a soft optic. They both have soft skirts. Uh, it is stable on the cornea. It doesn't move at all until it's removed by the doctor, whereas the bandage lens moves with every blink. It is water impermeable, and bandage lenses are water permeable. It has an extremely high oxygen permeability. So the shield provides smooth and stable optics for instantly better vision, and it also restores corneal physiology because it minimizes edema. So this is a shield versus bandage contact lens study, and this was conducted by Ed Manchi and Steve Slade, and it was a contralateral eye study, and it was randomly assigned whether the right or left eye got either one. 25 subjects, they were very evenly matched. They were about minus three and a quarter in both groups. And here you see, if you look at uncorrected acuity versus the bandage contact lens for the shield, the shield in blue, far better uncorrected acuity than the bandage lens in yellow, even at one hour. And it was statistically significantly uh, different in favor of the shield, even after the shield was removed on day three. On day four, that was the only day when uh, it was not quite statistically significant, but at all other time points, including one hour. Here you look at the uncorrected acuity. The first row, top row, is uncorrected 2040 or better. And the tall blue lines indicate the shield. The short yellow lines or, or, or columns are PRK. A huge difference at the 2040 level. The bottom row is 2025 or better. A huge difference in favor of the shield. If you look at best corrected, you see the same thing. At every single time point, including one hour, far better best corrected acuity with the shield. And the epithelial defect closes faster with the shield, and that was statistically significant. If you look at the percentage of epithelial healing, there's a big difference here. Uh, this is another way to look at it, basically. Um, you can see on days three and four, it's 52% and 92% complete epithelial closure with the shield versus 32 and 72 with the bandage contact lens. So the shield delivered significantly better uncorrected and best corrected acuity over the first week while the shield was on and even after it was removed at day three. Better functional vision during the first week. Accelerated epithelial he healing, but there was no impact on pain. The pain was still what PRK pain always is. So um, actually, the, um, the company recently closed up shop for that reason and selling their intellectual property, and they put all their shields in a storage area. But that's not the end of their story, as you'll see. Simultaneously with, with that research going on in the US, there was more research going on to improve PRK using a completely different technique. 
a group in Israel developed a novel epithelial removal device that improves outcomes after PRK. So in the US and Israel, there were people observing that the, the more trauma that you used in removing the epithelium, the more pain the, the patient had for the first week. So Yariv Baron of Tel Aviv developed a novel epithelial removal method to minimize trauma to the epithelium, Bowman's, and the stroma, and to clean the bed completely. He felt it was important to leave absolutely no cellular debris. So this disposable handheld device removes the epithelium in layers as atraumatically as possible, and you just move it back and forth in eight to 10 seconds. So this is a series out of Israel by Dr. Matslia Taib of Tel Aviv. It's a perspective comparison of EBK to laser scrape. And the two groups are very, very uh, well matched uh, from basically up to minus eight and a half. And it was same surgeon, wave light, allegretto, and they got a bandage contact lens. And the patients were assessed in all the usual ways. So here you see the clinical results for pain are extremely different in favor of EBK. That low blue line shows that there's very little pain, even at day one, compared to the bandage contact lens in the brown column. And on the right, the percentage of patients reporting any kind of pain or discomfort at very, very uh, low columns, even on day one, for um, group A, which is EBK, versus the taller brown columns, indicating more pain uh, in more patients with the standard uh, laser scrape. And this shows epithelial healing time faster, you know, the taller gray columns indicating faster healing time. And this is probably the most important, the percentage of patients within plus or minus a half diopter at six months, 98% with EBK versus 70% with PRK. There were 5% of the patients who had grade two haze, but this was in the PRK group only. And there were four people who needed an enhancement. This was in the PRK group only. Two eyes were minus 75, two eyes were minus one. So in conclusion, EBK uh, looks promising. Their early results on this new, less traumatic method of epithelial removal indicate that this technique provides faster return of vision, greater post-op comfort, better diopteric accuracy, less haze, and fewer enhancements. Of course, a larger series and longer follow-up are required, and a US clinical trial is about to start. But a pilot is underway in Israel to determine if the shield used in conjunction with EBK will improve surface ablation even further, at last making it equal to LASIK. Stay tuned. Thank you.